Today I'm going to talk about the things we used to do when we played. This is part two. I did a video recently, part one, and there's more. So, things that we used to do when we played. Uh, first one is hooking the player in the arm. So you could hook the player right here before they shot. That was allowed. So on a breakaway or, you know, just before the guy shoots, you can kind of give him a little hook in the arm. Won't let him make the shot. So that was allowed back in the day when we played. Next one is breaking our gloves in. So back in the day, the gloves were not as comfortable as today's gloves. They were more like they had horse hide leather. All the gloves were leather. So to break them in, what we used to do, we bend the fingers back and we put tape and if you had to use a new pair of gloves and the team, you know, with the team colors, we just had to use them and the way to break them in was put them, put tape overnight so the fingers bent back and that would stretch the leather. So that's how they were done. And today's gloves, I mean, you can use them right away in a brand, in a brand new in a game, no problem because they're just like already broken in. It's incredible the difference in the gloves and the difference back then, we had a longer cuff than what's today. So the cuffs I used to use back then, they came up to about here, which protected me more. And the gloves now, as you can see, they're all short cuffs, pro stock, or all of them are pretty much the same. Uh, more mobility, but I would say, you know, less protection in here. The other thing is uh, some gloves that I used over the years had laces in them. So it'd be laces in the gloves. So we had that too. That doesn't exist today. None of the gloves have laces in them. Next one is visors and cages. I didn't see too many people wearing visors when I played. And uh, cages, we, I wore a cage till I was about 15. After that, I went to a half shield visor and juniors. But when I get to the minor leagues, uh, hardly see anybody wearing a visor. In Sweden, they had a rule. If you're born after 1970, you have to wear a visor. But, but Oh, I gotta say the game was a lot cleaner. There was less sticks in the face. And today I think there's more stick work up in the face area. Uh, so that's the difference. It was a lot different. And the uh, reason for not wearing a visor, more vision, better vision out there. Um, but you can see now everybody's got a visor on and if you get in a fight, it's kind of dangerous, can really, cut your knuckles if you're trying to punch the guy the guy's got the helmet on so that's uh the bad part about it but um if i had to be commissioner i definitely would leave it uh no visors no cages definitely just helmets uh because the game would be a lot cleaner for sure and uh, i see more sticks up today than ever before next one that we were allowed to do back in the day and they can't do tap today today would probably be a suspension <laughs> It would definitely be suspension was in the corners from behind the net all the way to the hash mark, all four corners. You can elbow, you can hit hard, you can use your stick against the, his stick, hit hard, and there was nothing being called. So you could be in the corners battling, punching even, whatever it took to get the puck, and nothing was called. And every player knew that if you went in the corners, you'd expect that. And... Today, I think you'd be seeing probably everybody getting suspended if they played the way they did back in the day. And uh, it's a shame to see because hockey also has this physical part of the game that a lot of players were talented at doing. They were checking forwards and there was also, you know, the scoring forwards. So everybody had a role out there, but that part of the game is gone. You can't get in the corners and play like a Dino Cicerelli or a Scott Stevens or... I don't know, like a Wendell Clark or Cam Neely. It's just, it's sad to see because um, there is a part of that game that I miss that I don't see anymore. And that's just my opinion. I mean, you might disagree with me, that's fine. But this is part of the game that it took guts to get into the corner and get that pocket. It wasn't for everybody. The next one that we did was carry our own bags, meaning there was no wheels on the bags. So that didn't exist. No, everybody carried their bag over the shoulder. Uh, I'm not against wheels on the bag. Definitely a great idea, especially for the little kids not hurting their back, trying to carry a heavy bag. So I'm for wheels on the bag. Definitely, if there's wheels, it's okay. Nothing to be ashamed of. And it's a lot easier to drag 
and try to carry over your shoulder. And especially for little, little kids, you know, the coaches make them carry the bag. They don't have any wheels. So it's okay to have wheels on the bag. It doesn't mean anything for the ice. It's how you play the game. doesn't matter off the ice with that bag. If it has wheels or not, it's not going to make a difference for you. Only thing that maybe hurt your back if you're trying to carry it the wrong way, especially for kids, you know. Um, but I still don't have a wheels on the bag myself. Still use the old school style of carrying it, but it's okay for kids to have that. The next one that we did have was leather skates. So there was no synthetic or carbon fiber skates, all leather skates, which I miss. I loved leather skates, definitely felt like shoes. Today's skates, you have to heat, bake them in an oven. Uh, I don't know, and they break down a lot. You know, they rip apart easier. So, but the leather skates, you know, they, you have to cross stitch them if you want to reinforce them. And they can add more leather inside the shoemaker, especially for the skates that did them in Canada. It was 150 bucks at the time. And, uh, you know, it's custom made. And I still have a pair that held up for like 14 years. I just uh, used too many blades over the years that there was too many holes, but uh, the skate itself, that's, it was very good quality today. Like they, they, I see a lot of skate stitching comes apart you know, stuff cracks, uh, it's, it's lighter, but the difference is it's not feeling the same. As far as skating goes, you have to change your skating style to get used to skating with a carbon fiber skate compared to a leather skate back in the day. And uh, that's just, uh, I wish they still had the leather skates. On my video, you can see some graph skate that I do show. Uh, but those were probably the last leather skates was probably Graf. Bauer 3000 was great. Daus 501s were great. Micron 1090s, Mega, Micron Megas, those were awesome. Ray Bork wore those. CCM had a great skate, 652s, 651s, those were great also. Uh, probably Bauer 100s, I remember those were awesome. Uh, a few really good pairs of skates out there. Uh, Dao 501s, everybody loved those. Those were really good skates. And it's unfortunate that that's just the way the market goes towards the carbon fiber pretty much with everything now. It's just this lighter, but more money, you're spending like way more money and the quality is just doesn't last as much. And that's just my opinion. The next one we had was touch icing. So when the puck was thrown down for an icing, we had to chase it down and touch the puck in order to get the icing. Otherwise, if the other player got it, you know, they'd have a chance to go and score. So they added that uh, automatic icing recently, probably within the last, I would say, maybe 20 years or so. But before that, it used to be uh, touch icing, and that's how we all played. And... Uh, that one is definitely for safety reasons. The automatic icing is definitely uh, was a great idea. The next one that we were allowed to do, and you definitely can't do today, you probably get suspended, was clear out front of the net. Anybody stand in front of the net, you could just give them a little jolt in the back, just like that. Clear them out. Let them know that you're standing there. This is your net. This is your house. And nobody, if you stood there, you had to take the punishment. A lot of people did stand there, screen the goalie, and that took a lot of guts to stand in front of the net. But if you did, and you're a defense, you can, you know, you can give them a little jolt in the back, or you can put the stick between the legs, spin them around. You were allowed to hold them. So you can put them, put the stick here and just kind of hold them so he doesn't get a shot away, or you just couldn't move them. Uh, they would have called a cross check. I mean, if you really hit him hard and he goes down, they're gonna give a cross check, but if it's just a little bit of a jolt like that, a little bit quick, you know, um, that was allowed. And everybody knew that if you stood in front of the net, you're gonna take punishment. Uh, so like Wayne Gretzky, he always went behind the net and that's where he played a lot because of, you know, not taking that punishment in front of the net. But then you got other players that would stand in front of the net. Uh, you know, like I say, Holmstrom was one of them, I remember, Swedish guy. There's a lot of guys who stood in front of the net and that was their job to screen the goalie. But then you had defensemen that could clear you out and there was no penalty, that was part of the game. 
Today would probably get suspended for sure. The next one that we had was free junior hockey. Uh, junior hockey did not cost anything, it was all free. So basically you got free sticks, uh, not free skates. It would give you a discount on skates, but everything else, helmet, gloves, pants, um, all, all that was free. Uh, there was a limit of sticks like USHL, I think it was 24 sticks a season that we got. And then juniors in Canada, I don't remember. It was, it was free, like we go to the store and pick out what we want and they put on a team bill. And then the team also had sticks in the, in the locker room and we could have up to six sticks in the stall. So you had your stick stall, you know, where you put your sticks. I always had six in there and uh, everything was free. Uh, billet families, we didn't pay for anything. Uh, food was free. Uh, road trips, uh, <clears throat> they gave us like 25 bucks on every road trip meals. So they even give you the money, you go out and eat or the team pays for your meal. So pretty much all you had to pay was for the flight to go to the team, that was pretty much it. Everything else was covered over. Now today, junior hockey costs money. Uh, there's not very many leagues that are free. Uh, there's a lot of leagues that also are kind of, you only pay billets, but the hockey's free. So there's a little bit of everything, but it's really expensive compared to what we grew up where was no pay and uh, free hockey. And this is how it was.